Hello everyone and welcome to Mind the XR Gap. I'm Tiago Andrade, I'm here with Anasol Peña Rios, Oscar Bajeji, and we today have a very special guest, Max Smith Rissi. Is a um, security specialist specialized on biometrics and continuous authentication. Isn't that right, Max? Perfect introduction. Thank you, Tiago. <laughs> All right. Uh, so today we are going to talk about, uh, and you guessed it because it's on the title of this podcast, uh, security in XR devices. And first of all, I think we should try to define or see what are the potential security flaws <laughs> uh, regards to XR devices. So in security, it's always tied to technology and other stuff, of course, but more and Nowadays is even more important because uh, since the network appeared, uh, a lot of different issues start to appear. Am I correct? Like um, privacy issues, uh, attackers gaining access to information that they shouldn't have access, uh, malicious software trying to hack into computers and um, other devices. And um, XR devices, VR devices, mobile with AR and web web VR, they are not um, safe from that environment. So security needs to be always looking to first when developing an application, a VR application or an XR application. And uh, you need to be always aware and try to mitigate all of this. So I'm going to start and asking to see if we can define this to the people who are not security savvy, like Anasol and Oscan. Uh, what do you think are the biggest, or what do you think uh, is security in XR? I'm trying to think something specific to XR, but it's quite hard. I can think mm -hmm. of physic physical security. All right. Yeah. Where whilst you're in an immersive VR headset and you don't have a vision of your surrounding physical of the physical world. You can bump into stuff, hit people, and etc. That's one thing. And I when think it that's comes... the biggest biggest one for VR because uh, it's well, something different from the others. Normally, in the others, you still have that peripheral vision. Well, you could say that, but for example, I have previously bumped into a person when I was using an augmented reality mobile application mm -hmm. app, mm -hmm. and it's because I was trying to find the objects around me. And I was very too focused on my phone to yeah. find the objects in the physical world. I have bumped into people. And also I think one of, ah, that's an interesting one. Um, so I used to play Pokemon Go, which is something I'm not too proud of. <laughs> and Why not? and <laughs> I, one, what they started doing is um, they ask you to go and record an area. You scan the area, then you upload it to their cloud. And... I witnessed someone doing that and they were, they got shouted by another person because mm. he thought he was recording him. Okay. And that was, I, I, can, I guess that could be a security issue because. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a privacy. You can issue. end up with privacy checks that you can end up recording people, although they probably do process blur and stuff because they probably have to. But yeah, mm -hmm. and you can get beaten by people if they get too angry. So that's also a physical security issue. There's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What about you, Anasol? Um, yeah, I guess they are related, similar to what you have described. So security, um, sorry, privacy, uh, security of the data collected, um, more a bit more into malware like uh, sniffing or man in the middle, I don't know, or mm -hmm. malware that you put in some of the devices. Mm -hmm. But I guess one one of the most worrying ones is privacy, yeah. because at the moment headsets are collecting a lot of data, and we have discussed this in, in previous conversations about how Facebook, for example, is now forcing people to have a Facebook account to use the Oculus, and they are collecting data. So how do how we can protect uh, ourselves? from these uh, do we really know what type of data they are collecting yeah. and what happens if I don't want this data to have I mean to be in saved in their servers but I still want to use VR so what are the options yeah I agree completely that's that's the Facebook is a big issue because you don't have an alternative um, and that starts to be a very in the security wise um, I think it's a big field is like okay I don't want even though 
Facebook, of course, says it can protect the data in, in a security way and sends all the data, but may the person may not be willing to um, get that uh, that data for to the to the Facebook. So uh, it's a bit troublesome uh, when you don't have uh, alternatives. But but it's not only about protecting the data from outside attacks or anything, but it's also ethical use of the data and Facebook is one of the companies, businesses who hasn't been doing it mm -hmm. 100% so exactly. because there's been news about how they change people's moods by changing what they see on their, what is it called, the news suite on Facebook and so on and yeah, the other stuff that we previously talked about. So what type of, what is the unique type of data you can collect from VR that would differ from a typical Facebook data or other device so can they is can they already collect what you're looking at what you focus that in an app yeah. and i think vr brings a new thing to the table which when we start looking at uh, behavior collection or behavior categorization and uh, of course you could also do that in other devices but this one is or the xr devices actually gives access to your natural movements and natural way to do things and all of that data is being collected. What if uh, an attacker or a, a malicious person is able to actually start characterizing all those behaviors and use it in a malicious way? And that's worrisome. And I think that's why we need to keep <laughs> all these devices always secure because uh, it can go wrong very, very easily. Another, another thing is um, these devices have a lot of sensors on them which allows us to create biometrics profiles and here where where max enters into the picture max what do you think are using biometrics profile um can impact security on these devices well you know my as you say my sort of um, interest in this lies in the biometrics and authentication perspective yeah. um there are a lot of papers already on using sensors of um, from VR headsets, the accelerometer data, for example, to authenticate people. You know, usually we use um, uh, passwords and things like that. And VR is a completely different realm of how you'd how you'd authenticate. You can, of course, use passwords within VR, but I think you know, when, especially when I'm using a keyboard within VR, it's slightly clunky. I, it's not as in intuitive, and that's where you know. Um, the sensor readings could come in and the biometrics could come in as they have been in 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 papers that have um, researched this stuff to you know utilize um, behavior to authenticate you know you you mentioned using behavior for a lot of other things but um yeah my interest in in user behavior is always from the authentication perspective and as you say within vr you've got accelerometers in people's arms in their head you know uh there's a lot of studies on gait recognition mm -hmm. um, using accelerometers. Um, people you know, with their phone in their pocket or their, their, their um, device on their wrist, you, know, you can get accelerometer data from that to track um, how they walk. And you know this could this could um, and has come in in studies into the, the way that you can authenticate people in 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 VR as well. There's a recent paper that came out a year or two ago when they got people to. You know, perform diff different activities, and it you know it was shown that you know people do perform activities differently in VR. So yeah, the the, the way that people behave is definitely something that is of you know research interest and has papers produced about how it could be used as a um, suitable biometric for authentication. I have a question about biometrics. Would ma muscle movements or movements of a person count as a biometric? It wouldn't, right? Like the way you run is a biometric for, do you know what I mean? Like eye and fingerprint is a biometric, but is a muscle movement count as biometric? Yeah, I think, I think that's how it is. It's, it's a trait of your the human body, isn't it? You know, DNA is classed as a biometric, so I'd, um, there'd be no reason why someone's you know, muscle physiology, physiology wouldn't be um, classified as, as a biometric, I think. Yeah, because when I think about biometrics, the first thing you think about is a biometric passport and what you think about is something unique to you. Like yeah. fingerprint or eye, eye, iris or something. I literally have no idea. <laughs> but like 
your muscle movements can be easily replicated, whereas can your fingerprint easily be replicated or the eye? Well, there's a there's a whole field of um, you know, spoofing biometrics. Um, yeah. So some of these things can be replicated, and then it's the job of you know researchers to try and find methods to you know, stop those stop those attacks mm -hmm. to, to detect the attacks. Um, but but I find it I find it interesting what you said about uh, muscles potentially and muscle movements potentially being um, uh, biometrics because you know as I say things things you wouldn't have thought of generally classed as biometrics like DNA is is of course a biometric it's a trait of the human body. Mm -hmm. um, you've also got hard biometrics and soft biometrics and soft biometrics are only biometrics that you know, don't define you but define your 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 group so you know your hair color is a trait of you, you yeah. but it's also a trait of other people so it's it's, it's a soft biometric mm -hmm. um, a fingerprint is unique to you so that's hard biometric and then you've got further divisions like f um, physiological biometrics and behavioral biometrics um, you know subtle behaviors that you wouldn't thought our biometrics are, are very distinguishable for different people um, yeah, whereas you know we tend to just think of biometrics being the physiology mm -hmm. physiology like fingerprints and um, faces. Yeah, it's that's very interesting, interesting. In, in broad field. And yeah, yeah, there's a lot of interesting questions in, in the area. Uh, looking at the, the gait, um, it, which is the, the way people move, and even eyes the gait, so the, the way the eye moves are actually unique from person to person. So you can uh, actually identify correctly the person using this kind uh, of uh, devices. And create a profile on them, isn't that correct? Yeah, you could. The the you know you can form a profile of any sort of types of biometrics. The more biometrics, the better often. And um, yeah, there's been a lot of research in 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 both gait and ISACs. Yeah, and I agree. And it, it can be hazardous, like Oscar mentioned in the first place, because a malicious person can actually uh, create uh, ways to uh, tap into the VR environment for example and uh, change the, the way that a user moves for example the speed of the user and that can cause disorientation can cause people to feel motion sickness and in the worst case scenarios people can bump into physical objects and start yeah. hurting themselves I actually have a new idea mm -hmm. or even worse imagine if because you know with the recent standalone headsets you can set up a boundary which is the safe environment you can play yeah. in what if someone can alter the boundary? Yeah, exactly. And that could be very bad. <laughs> and you're playing in a balcony. Think about that. Well, you shouldn't play VR in balcony. No, yeah. First of all. <laughs> but let's say you have a very big balcony and it's a very, very hot day and you decide to take it outside and someone can alter your. Yeah, and people are getting hurt with these security systems in place. Imagine that we, if we can temper with those security systems. Right. Something worth worth mentioning, Tiago, is, is you, yeah. know, you and I published a paper on um, yeah. a potential side channel attack here as well, where we did collect accelerometer data from the way that people used um, their VR systems, and we found that you know, as would be expected, the way that people behave in different types of applications is noticeable. So if you were to extract that accelerometer data, then you know you could feasibly detect what what activity someone is doing. And that that's a privacy issue in itself, and that's you know, something that is is out there in the domain for for people to read our paper if they if they are so inclined. <laughs> but that I think that's an interesting uh, yeah, it's an, an interesting. And it, it the good th the the most interesting thing is we can collect that outside the the XR environment. So we did a test where we could actually tamper with your mobile phone that is sitting on your pocket, for example, and uh, because your mobile phone also has an accelerometer sensor there, is actually collecting your movements. So all the movements that you're using or that you're doing in VR are being somehow translated, or the the the, the waves are going to your to your phone, and that can by itself uh, be a, a entering point of what you're doing, which is interesting. I will, we will put a, also that paper on the link if you want to, to learn more. And of course, we are looking into ways, how can we protect and uh, kind of stop this from happening if it happens. Uh, we don't have any um, 
we are not aware that this is being applied for malicious purposes, but it's something that we researchers need to look into and kind of be um, one step ahead, saying we know that this will be possible somehow and in the future. So what we are going to do now is building a system that actually prevents that. So this is the end of the first part out of two of this episode on security in XR devices. Uh, hope you join us next month for the second part. See you soon. <laughs>